Hello and welcome to my new video. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Lex and today we're going to be looking at a lot of different really unique and creative ideas for decorating around your museum. So if you're stuck on how to place it, where to place it, or what to put around it, stay tuned because some of these islands are amazing. Here is the code for my dress today by ACNH Fashion on Twitter, super talented creator, and I just wanted to take a second here to remind you all this will be the last reminder before my giveaway ends. I'm still giving away two $20 Nintendo eShop gift cards to two winners, and the way you can enter is to use the link in the description to download Disney Emoji Blitz, when you reach level 10, send me the screenshot of you getting there on either Instagram or Twitter, both linked in the description, and that's it. You'll be entered for the giveaway. It ends on April 15th, and that's right around the corner, so get started, kids. Also, a lot of the people who have entered already mentioned that they actually got like really into the game after they started playing, and I feel that too, so who knows? Maybe it's your next favorite game, fellow gamers. Anyway, I think it's time to get started, so let's go ahead and look at this first museum. I think it is so well done. You can see it's sort of sunken here. And the creator was very clever. They have used the fourth level glitch to not only make the museum sunken, but also give the area around it so many layers. It's just stunning. There's also some really beautiful waterscaping going on here. You can see that the creator put a lot of thought into how they wanted to, you know, surround the museum. There are lots of plants, there's lots of custom designs, and altogether it just looks really fantastic. I like that it's sort of hidden from the beach, but you can still get back and forth from the museum and the beach through that like little corridor. So I just think this whole area is really nicely done. It's spacious, but the museum isn't taking up like a huge portion of the island. It's mostly the gorgeous terraforming around it. Up next, we have a beautiful tropical paradise in Ponderosa. Look at how well this museum is situated. We've got like a land bridge leading into it and it's just surrounded by lush greenery, lots of statues to give it that like old, uh, Kind of ancient almost feel kind of like abandoned ruins but look how cool it is you can see straight forward through the doors in the museum it's lined up perfectly which is great very satisfying and i just think it's really nicely decorated we've also got dobie's house i believe here he's kind of like the groundskeeper in my personal head canon that might also be what ej intended the creator but I was like stuck on how beautiful the surroundings for the land bridge are. Look at all of these plants, all of these flowers, trees, the custom designs on the ground. They make it feel lush without feeling cluttered. And that might seem easy, but it really isn't. So props to EJ for achieving that. This next island also has a super lush vibe. Look at this outdoor bath centerpiece here. And you can see something of note is that this creator elected to keep Blathers in his tent rather than upgrade to the museum. And you can do that and still unlock terraforming. So if you want to experiment with, you know, a different way to decorate your museum, don't upgrade it and see what you can do with the tent version because it does like, I don't know, it has a very nice aesthetic, I guess. And you know, it's not super common, so very unique. I loved this island. I thought everything was so beautifully done. And you get rock garden inspo too, because right in front of this museum around the outdoor bath, a rock garden. Another great thing that you can incorporate near your museum is a study area for blathers. Maybe don't use bugs because he doesn't like those, but it's all up to you. I think this is a super cute way to arrange the museum. We've got all of these, you know, these random furniture pieces, statues, the termite mound. I love the termite mounds. I just think they're so cool. And then we've got a little bench for, you know, maybe you're just waiting for your friend to come out of the museum. Who knows? But I think this is very well decorated. I love that this like pathway kind of follows and you continue to see things related to the museum. These little fossils everywhere, statues, bugs, bug models. It's all just very beautiful. 
I also love this view because you can see the fossils situated behind the museum from this angle and it just looks fantastic. I also like that there is an incline leading down into the museum area. Next up, we have this incredibly grand museum area. Also, this is a good time to mention, if you want to visit any of the dream addresses for you know the places I visit in the video, they'll be in the description where the creator permits and the creator for this island recently released their dream address. So if you wanna visit, now is the time. I think everything here is so beautiful. The color coordination is great and so is the symmetry. I think that that is a very important component in this elegant core city island and it really, the creator just pulls it off so well. Also look at Pietro walking around. He's like the museum jester. That's another headcanon. I think this fountain centerpiece is also gorgeous and the benches around the beautiful statue. We've got a land bridge that I'm not gonna cross because that's not for this video, but also beautiful. Everything here just truly blew me away. In stark contrast to the sunny city, we've got a kind of rainforest uh, aesthetic going on here. I love the pathing here with the custom designs layered on top, the colorful flowers and everything. It just, everything comes together so nicely. I love the stone lion dog statue that just looks great there, centered in front of the museum. And look how cute everything is. Look at the little paper lanterns, the pink and orange flowers. It all looks so good. I also really loved the shell lamps here. I don't think we've seen those situated near the museum yet in any of the other islands. And I think it fits since the museum does just look over the beach. Despite the fact that this island is in the very early hours of the morning, the museum area was bustling. We had Toby and Marshall walking around. I think Toby is so cute. Look at him go. Absolute legend. I thought that this museum area was beautiful as well. I love the pathing. I don't think we've seen this pathing yet and it's just iconic and beautiful, like broken stone vibe. Just fits this area so well. And I like how vibrant the flowers are around it. It's got its own sort of flower garden almost and it's very brightly, vividly themed. I think that is fantastic. I myself always go for muted colors and I'm really trying to break that habit because I think the vibrant flowers and other plants in this game are so gorgeous. Also of note, the beach to the left of the museum was themed around the museum itself. So there were fossils, a study area for blathers. You just can't go wrong with that. I mean, there are so many different ways to design a study area and the ones we've seen so far, spectacular. While doing this video, I realized that inclines leading down towards the museum are apparently a popular design choice and I see why. All of them have been so well done and beautiful. I thought that this was super unique because there were little hop hop areas where you could get from the incline to the museum. Super cute and it was so calm and foresty at this time of day. So many deep greens going on. It was just a very calming place to visit. I thought that the pretty limited furniture was a really nice touch. It makes this museum area feel so natural and just like it's part of the woods, you know, a forgotten building almost. I also loved that the creator planted green pumpkins and weeds because they don't really draw the eye, but they do give texture to the landscape in a way you might not even notice right off the bat, which is next level genius. This next island blew me away as well. I don't even know how to describe the theme aside from perhaps an overgrown city. I thought it was so beautiful. I liked the road lines on the light dirt path and I love the details around the museum, like the little scattered papers and the rusted part, amazing. And look at this museum itself. It's set up as sort of like a research center kind of vibe and I love that the museum facade itself is covered with the simple panels and jail bars. It makes it feel so official, like a government building almost. And look, again, we have a little study sesh to the side. We have a drink machine, a snack machine. It just feels very city-like, you know, it feels very nice. We've got like live specimens out here. We love to see it.
I really appreciated the mix of fencing here. We have hedges and the vertical board fence, which both look amazing. And we've got this little stall with a fossil. Everything just so cohesive. Everything goes together. And I wouldn't think that it would work in cherry blossom season, but the pink trees really add something to this island, I think. They look so beautiful here, and I just thought everything came together so well. I also love this, like, kind of an insinuation that there used to be a full road here. Very nice. This next island also still had Blathers in his tent, and the tent sort of functions as the center for the national park. We've got the little sign to the left. This is such an open space, which I loved. I feel like I especially try to really make the area around the museum narrow, I guess, like it's leading directly to the museum and nowhere else, but this is such an open, happy, vibrant area, and I've come to expect that from this creator. So talented, so creative. Everything just looks great here. I wish that I'd had the foresight to keep Blathers in his tent for Antilia because I think that would have worked out really well somewhere on the island in one of, in like a jungly area. But this just looks so good. I love all of the vibrant flowers and it's right near resident services which makes sense for the National Park Center. This next island inspired me because I want to have a bridge near my museum but it always bothers me that it's not completely in line with it since the bridges are four across and the museum entrance is three across and this island just put it off to the side so that the museum is sitting on its own little island with a nice backdrop of trees and a dinosaur fossil. I think it looks so cute and nice and we've got like a tiny study area for Blathers. Also the surrounding terraforming was just beautiful. This was such a nice just cozy island. This museum required a stroll through the statue garden, which I thought was just gorgeous. And the museum itself is kind of hidden back here. It reminded me of how I built the Lost Falls Museum, kind of just behind a cliff where you can barely see it, but it's still fully accessible and out of the way if you're running out of space. And also look at this little, like it almost looks like a school classroom, but it's another study place for blathers. I love that everyone is treating him so well. He deserves the space for himself. Blathers is such a king. But yeah, this statue garden was such a beautiful touch. I also decided to visit this museum because I really like that there was a centerpiece out in front. I thought that was so nice. Another very open area, but this time make it more city themed. Whereas before we saw a national park theme, this looks so good as well. And I love the stall to the side. It looks like they're like selling goodies almost. It's like a museum gift shop. And then we've got the art on display, the fountain, everything just popped off. It looks great. My favorite part of this was actually the barrels just to the left of the museum. I think they really add texture and character to the area, and I like how it's arranged. The amber on the barrel looks amazing. The next museum I visited required a stroll through a butterfly grotto, which I thought was just astounding. Super beautiful. And look at this entrance! It's got like that classic fairy core path going on. I think it's beautiful. So many colors happening. I love the use of butterfly models, the red mushroom partition looks great here, and we've got like statues lined up almost like the museum is cleaning out its stock, its exhibits. Everything about this was just so cute and so colorful, and again we're in cherry blossom season so you've got the beautiful blossoms floating through the air which just adds, you know, the ethereal vibe to the island. But yeah, I was so taken with this little butterfly area, so gorgeous. And last but not least, I wanted to show an example of using your museum as a building, you know, like a fake building, kind of like we saw in the overgrown city island. This one is huge. We've got an enormous palace here on the island of Hollowick. I don't even want to think about how long it must have taken to acquire all of these simple panels, but the execution of this castle is great. I love all of the items used. You can see the little leaning towers of Pisa here. And here's a zoomed out view so you can see everything, including the silos at the entrance. This just took so much time and the arrangement is so perfect. It's such a grand, huge building. So if you're looking to kind of explore buildings, fake buildings using simple panels, especially now that we have standees, here you go. 
Thank you all so much for watching today. I hope that you found these islands just as inspiring as I did. I think these creators are just beyond talented and I hope that you'll check them out again in the description along with the link to download Disney Emoji Blitz. Thank you all again and here is Peaches to tell you all goodbye for now. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!